Thank you for joining us. The Library of Judaica at the University of Florida is considered the foremost Jewish studies research collection in the southeastern United States. It ranks among the top 20 academic libraries in the world. The library was dedicated in 1981 and is named for Easter and Ray Price, and today library patrons will find a Jewish studies collection of notable depth and singularity. Its diversified holdings in English, Hebrew, and other languages support scholarship in virtually every aspect of the Jewish experience and its culture and influence spanning over 3,000 years of recorded history. Dr. Rebecca Jefferson, the head of the Price Library of Judaica, will tell us more following these messages. Life Extension Foundation was established in 1977 and is now the world's largest consumer-based anti-aging organization. Life-saving achievements taken for granted today were pioneered by Life Extension Foundation decades ago. Life Extension is currently funding $10 million a year in research on significantly extending a healthy human lifespan. Diseases that once plagued humanity have largely been eradicated by scientific innovation. Three leading causes of death in 1900 are no longer leading killers today. Smallpox killed millions before it was eliminated in 1979. Life Extension funds research to fight biological aging so that it also will become a relic of the past. To learn more, log on to lifeextensionfoundation.org. Find magic again. Sprout by HP. With Intel RealSense technology inside, now you can bend the rules of creativity outside. With this now is Dr. Rebecca Jefferson. A real pleasure and privilege. Lovely to meet you, thank you. What a lovely environment to be speaking with you in, this beautiful library. That's right. Please tell us about it. Well, uh, this space opened in 2014. Uh, we're sitting in um, the old library of the university that uh, was built in 1925. Um, this space here was an addition from the 1930s, and it housed various uh, special collections in here, which outgrew the space over time. And then it became a really messy office area <laughs> uh, where the curators uh, sat and processed collections. So when the Dean of the Libraries came here in 2006, she really hated the messy space and wanted to restore this beautiful building uh, to its former grandeur. Uh, and she knew that we had a preeminent Judaica library uh, and she wanted to dedicate this space to our special Judaica library collections. So she um, commissioned uh, Kenneth Treister who is a Florida architect and artist. Um, maybe you know him from the memorial, the Holocaust Memorial down on Miami Beach, the, the famous the hand. Um, and so he, he redesigned this space for us and it's really beautiful. Um, he put in all of his artwork, his bespoke furniture. You're sitting on furniture that he had built for his house, um, Honduras Mahogany. Um, and uh, every alcove has um, a table with two chairs, which represents the Jewish tradition of studying with a partner. Um, every alcove has a quote on the walls that he chose to reflect the subject matter uh, in, each, in each area. So for instance, over there we have Albert Einstein, that's for the Diaspora collection. We have a wonderful quote from Golda Meir for our um, Israel collection. Um, and we have um, artwork on the walls representing in abstract the seven days of creation. And in the four corners of the wall, um, you can find um, sections of the Shema prayer. Um, this space um, is much loved. <laughs> we use it for classrooms. 
We use it for events and lectures. And of course, researchers come here and use the material too. And then during the day when I'm sitting in my office, we have students coming by just wanting to see it. <laughs> so it's a very, very loved space. Rebecca, this is absolutely fascinating. Please tell us of the content of this magnificent library. The uh, university set up a center for Jewish studies in 1973. And of course, we needed a library to, um, to support the center. Uh, and it so happened at that time there was a, a private library on sale uh, and it belonged to a rabbi in Chicago, Rabbi Mishkin, um, and he had at the time the largest and best private library in the country. Um, the University of Florida sent Harvard's bibliographer along to review it and he said that if we purchased it, it would catapult us into the ranks of the long-standing universities. Um, together with a National Endowment for the Humanities Challenge Grant and community support, we got Mishkin's library and that stood at the core of our collection. Um, then we acquired a, a marvelous, huge collection from a, a, a professor at Brandeis. And then when we got our first librarian, we uh, acquired a bookshop, bookshop from New York's Lower East Side called Morgan Stearns. And it was full of Yiddish books, all the classics and very rare pieces as well. So we got a, a huge library suddenly in the 1970s. Um, and then we were very, very lucky. Uh, the library uh, got um, a very large endowment given to us by a family in Jacksonville, um, Sam and Jack Price, and they named it for their parents, uh, Issa and Ray. So it's the Issa and Ray Price Library of Judaica. And at present, it's around 110,000 volumes. Um, it's the largest and best in the Southeast in the United States. Um, and then what we've placed in this special collections room are our very rare books. And they're mostly late 19th, early 20th century books. Many of them um, have come out of Europe, um, uh, pieces that were otherwise lost and dest or destroyed. Sometimes we have a copy of something that we have and only the National Library of Israel has. Um, just a handful of other libraries have many of the materials that are in this room. Um, the library is organized according to subject matter. So we have um, rabbinics, uh, Hebrew Bible, we have the diaspora, land of Israel, the Holocaust, um, a wonderful, wonderful collection of Yiska books, memorial books created by the survivors of the Holocaust. We have uh, books about the Americas, we have arts, literature, you know, any subject that uh, you know, Jewish history is very long and uh, very, very, very interesting uh, around the world. So we have many, many languages, many pieces of history uh, represented here and a wonderful, wonderful Yiddish collection. Um, just, just, just a taster for you of some of the things that we have here and that you can come and see if you come and visit us. I'm here now. I'm very, <laughs> yes. very privileged to be here. Oh, I'd like to ask you, what is the importance of libraries in Hebrew and Jewish traditions nowadays? I think, um, I think we preserve something of Jewish heritage. I think uh, we, we, if you think about the Jewish book, um, it's a bit of a survivor. Um, the Jewish people have been through the Crusades, <laughs> the pogroms, the Holocaust, um, disaster and uh, terrible trials and tribulations and each time and the, the burning of the books in the Middle Ages and um, for Jewish books to have made it through this far <laughs> is something of a miracle so I think libraries play the role of um, preserving and looking after those survivors. Echoing the survival and endurance of the Jewish people in general absolutely. I would say. Absolutely, yeah. In today's age we have computers, the digital age, what influence is that having on libraries such as this? Oh, a huge influence. So at the same time that we want to preserve the physical copy, because many of our physical copies have their own stories. They've, they've traveled, they, they, they're amazing. But at the same time, the digital world, we're, we're really harnessing that. Because unless you can get here to Gainesville, it's gonna be hard for you to consult that particular book for your research. Or, so we are scanning many, many of our materials, uh, particularly those that are um, out of copyright um, and making them available online, freely accessible around the world. Uh, this is a, a huge uh, endeavor of ours. And for this, we uh, uh, partly for this, we, we won another National Endowment for the Humanities Challenge Grant to um, start um, 
uh, digitizing our collections where they pertain to Florida Jewish history, Latin American and Caribbean Jewish history, and to institute partnerships uh, in those regions to uh, digitize what other institutions might have as well and that we can host online. Is there any change in the demand for research resources in your library? I think the digital world, it's often, there is a worry that if things are scanned, people won't come to the libraries. But it's actually not true, and uh, research has shown the opposite. Uh, if you have something online, obviously the person sitting in their home, they can use the material on their computer, uh, but it creates more of a demand to see the actual object. Nothing really ever replaces uh, the material itself, um, except for when it comes to maybe um, printed journals and that sort of thing. It's not such a, uh, a need. But, but when we're talking about manuscripts and archives and rare materials, you really have to see the thing in the round and you really have to see, if you're talking about manuscripts, you really want to see that um, very rare letter in context of the rest of the collection and, and, and actually coming here and physically viewing it. Uh, is important. So we, we think that special collections have a really important role to play as well. Um, but it's, it is very true that the digital world is now forcing libraries to really start rethinking uh, what they offer and really looking um, to their unique collections now and, um, and promoting these as uh, what libraries have to offer. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. Who actually, in general, are the scholars and students who come here? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, our uh, scholars here um, at the university, we have a wonderful Center for Jewish Studies with some scholars doing amazing work. Um, uh, and, and they use the collection a great deal. And, and we work together to continue to build the collection for their scholarship. The students come here, but it's not just the students for Jewish Studies. We, we do Jewish Studies classes in this space, but students from all over the university come and use this room. Um, we are open now on Mondays just for quiet study uh, and in fact we're one of the few libraries now where it really is truly quiet. <laughs> A lot of libraries uh, are offering their space for collaboration and talking and, and that's wonderful. Um, but sometimes you just want a quiet space and that's what we offer. Um, so we get uh, students from all over and they, different classes are held in this room as well, um, from anthropology through to science, um, you know, all, all manner of students come and use this space. Um, and then of course we get visiting scholars um, who come and use our collections. Uh, uh, we had somebody recently, um, they were from Duke, uh, Duke University, uh, uh, we have a lot of material that they don't have, um, and he came here to use the collection. Our collection um, is is uh, used very heavily on the interlibrary loan system as well. A lot of uh, the major universities request our material through interlibrary loan. Well, collaboration is so very important. Right. I'd like us to continue, but we have to pause for these commercial messages. We'll be back in just a moment. We are back with Dr. Rebecca Jefferson. Rebecca, I'd like to ask you a little bit about a rather unpleasant question, generally mm -hmm. funding. How is such an exquisite library operated? How do you get the funding for this? It's, it's difficult. We, we do need uh, support for our work. Um, but we, and we've, we've always had the uh, wonderful support of the Price family, whose endowment has enabled us to buy special materials uh, for the library. Um, but to really... Um, what we want to do is, we have something really special here, so we really want to um, catapult it onto the national level. Uh, so that's been one of my uh, major endeavours. Um, so we, that's why we applied for the second National Endowment for the Humanities Challenge grant. So it was, it was a very, um, it was a wonderful award because they're very difficult to get. Um, you have to write a 200 plus page proposal. Um, and it's very competitive um, and you have to show how what you want to do with your library museum institution um, has relevance for, uh, for a broad spectrum of people. So we decided to look at where we are now and what would really help the University of Florida. So we realized that we have one of the best um, Latin American collections in the nation 
and we have one of the top Florida history collections and one of the top um, Judaica collections. So we decided to align forces and start collecting the Jewish experience in those regions because that will help researchers interested in Latin American history and it will help um, uh, fill in uh, a history that still is being written. Uh, a lot of people are very, very interested in Latin American Jewish history, but the resources aren't there for them. So that's where we decided to come in. So we won this grant and we got $500,000 offered to us from the federal government. It's a matching fund. Um, and so for every $3 that we raise, they give us a dollar. <laughs> and that's a five-year grant. So we're, we're, we're out there looking for support right now. <laughs> and we've done very well so far. We've built um, a, an endowment at the moment worth $800,000. Um, and the interest of that in perpetuity will help us do amazing, amazing things like, um, so for example, we're partnering with the Ashkenazi Institute in Mexico to um, digitize and scan their archives, which um, have hitherto not been seen. Um, you'd have to go to Mexico to study them, um, but we're going to make them available to everybody. Um, we are partnering with the Evo Institute in Buenos Aires. We're partnering with an Argentinian Jewish newspaper to make their content uh, fully available. Um, the Jamaican Jewish Tombstones Research Group. <laughs> um, and um, with the Barbados Synagogue Restoration Project. So you can see that we're uh, reaching out to many uh, groups and institutions uh, around this region to make material that um, researchers couldn't get to otherwise. I mean, if you, if you are a scholar um, uh, interested in Barbados Jewish history, you're going to have to go to, you're going to have to have the money to travel, you're going to have to go to several institutions to build that history. This way, when we provide it online, it's going to be there um, for scholars to have at their fingertips and really uh, write those unwritten histories. Absolutely marvellous. I was thinking, some people in our audience, the Shalom Show is broadcast nationwide, not only in Florida, but actually reaching 44.5 million homes nationwide. And many people in our audience might be interested in supporting your work. Mm -hmm. uh, how would they contact you for this? Oh, wow. <laughs> that would be marvellous. Um, we, we have a Judaica Library website. And we have NEH Challenge Grant as a page that you can click on. It tells you all about the grant. Um, and has a link for you to, um, to show where you can support us. Or if you'd like to talk to me first, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can email me, uh, rjefferson at ufl.edu. <laughs> and uh, that, that would be marvelous to hear from anybody who's interested in supporting us or just learning more about um, our initiative. And there are other ways to support too. It hasn't all been about funding because um, the idea of a challenge grant is to build the endowment and then to use the endowment to do what you say you're going to do. But we've done it differently. We've already started doing what we're going to do, <laughs> if you like. So we've already established these partnerships, uh, already doing many, many things. Um, and so uh, we've been going out uh, to congregations around the state of Florida and we've been um, collecting Florida Jewish history. So if you have... Um, papers in your home, photographs, documents, letters, and you'd like to talk to me about those. Maybe you think they belong in the library, or maybe you just want some advice about them. You know, we, we're very happy to talk to you, and that's something uh, we've been doing as well. So collecting materials is, is another way to help us <laughs> and help this initiative. As you're saying all of this, I was thinking about Barbados, mm -hmm. uh, the congregations and the center in Argentina and elsewhere. Right. As you know, we produce several uh, Shalom Show specials in Latin America and would very much like to do some more, perhaps at the destinations you've mentioned. And I believe if we do some of these in collaboration with your library, it would be very interesting to our audience and helpful. Tell us more about, if I may ask, your background. My background, yes, of course. Um, I, I, you can probably tell from the accent that I'm not from these parts. Um, I come from England. Um, I, uh, uh, when I left high school, I went to Israel. Uh, and I lived in Israel off and on for five years on a couple of kibbutzim. Uh, and I learned Hebrew. Uh, and loved the language very much. So when I returned to England, I went and did an undergraduate in Hebrew, and followed by a master's in medieval Hebrew, um, at which point I became very fascinating, fascinated with a wonderful collection called the Cairo Geniza. Uh, and that's, that collection is housed in Cambridge. 
Um, so I went to do my doctorate in Cambridge to work on that collection. And then I was extremely fortunate because then I got to actually work with the collection and I was hired as a researcher in the Cairo Geniza Research Lab. So uh, that's uh, uh, just marvelous, marvelous collection. Wonderful story. I could tell you all about that too. <laughs> um, uh, and I won't be able to stop. Um, <laughs> but I, my husband and I really wanted to move to the United States. And um, I was looking for a position uh, with a similar collection. Uh, and uh, this library, the librarian had retired. And uh, the former librarian was called Robert Singerman. And he's, uh, uh, he's somebody who's known around the world um, in Jewish studies because he's a world famous bibliographer. He's compiled the bibliography of Latin American uh, Jewish studies, the bibliography of Jewish periodicals. At the moment, he's working on the bibliography of anti-Semitism. Um, so I, I knew that if it, he'd built this library, it was something very special indeed. So um, yes, I was very fortunate <laughs> to come here and um, be chosen as his successor. I would say you've spent a lifetime looking at facts, mm -hmm. manuscripts, mm -hmm. indisputable evidence, historical facts. If I may ask you, what is your view on the revisionists who try to change history or misrepresent what really occurred? It's very disturbing. Um, I think the facts will always speak for themselves. I think. And I think that's the role we play, the books, the materials, the written word, you can't dispute that. It's, um, um, so we, we capture truth, truth here. We also, I mean, that plays into a, an unfortunate collection that we have here in the library. We have an anti-Semitica collection. Um, so Robert Singerman felt that it was really important to retain and record um, hate literature um, and so he started to build that and he's built built a massive collection part of which is here it's over there uh, in the corner um, and we, we don't advertise the fact um, but it's here it's it's a record um, we, we we want it to be we want to make sure that that truth is always known um, the hate literature is here um, and then Alongside that, very interestingly, we've just um, acquired an amazing collection um, that isn't with us at the moment. It's, it's en route. <laughs> it's being shipped to us. Uh, it's coming from New York. Um, it's an anti-Semitism collection. It was, um, there was a, a, a Holocaust survivor who made his way to Argentina uh, and set himself up as a reparations lawyer. Um, uh, fighting for justice for thousands of survivors across Latin America. And later in his life, he um, decided that he had to know what is this anti-Semitism? It, it was in the 1970s in Argentina and anti-Semitism was on the rise again. He'd survived the Holocaust and he couldn't believe that he was seeing anti-Semitism again. And so he decided to compile a survey, uh, questions to try and get to the heart of this. Uh, and he sent it to, he, he compiled a list of 5,000 world leaders and thinkers and writers, and he sent this survey to each one of them, and he received a 1,000 responses. Uh, and, and so that's the collection we're getting here very soon, and we think it's going to be very special indeed. A 1,000 responses. A 1,000 responses from the likes of Margaret Thatcher, the King of Morocco, Isaiah Berlin, Elie Wiesel in their handwriting and their thoughts on what is, what is anti-Semitism, uh, which we think will be a very important collection. Does the collection include comments by Holocaust deniers? N not necessarily those who are known deniers, but very interestingly, politicians who would rather have not addressed the subject. Uh, if, as, uh, I think there was one letter that includes the statement, move on, stop. Stop asking this question, move on. Sounds like lies by omission. I'm the son of Holocaust survivors, so I'm, I have a special interest in the truth. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. On a happier thought, share with our audience your plans for the future and library. Right. 
well, we are hoping that um, when our grant is over in 2019, that we'll just continue to do this work. Uh, we'll have more funding support to be able to do, continue the projects and grow them. Uh, and we're really hoping to become uh, one of the nation's leading centers for uh, the Jewish experience in Latin America, the Caribbean, and here in Florida. And that um, we will have as many of the resources as possible to, um, for researchers in those fields. That, that's, that's our ambition, that's our goal. Um, but uh, to continue to um, have this room available for people to use and to um, and be a space that people can come to and enjoy as well. Um, that's the long term. <laughs> This is also very important, and it's been a real privilege and pleasure to be with you here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anywhere else, this would be a vacation on the Mediterranean. But here, it's also a journey into history. From modern Tel Aviv to the ancient cities of Herod, the Romans, the Crusaders. The history of Israel lives in all of us. Come find the Israel in you. Human age reversal, we may be there already. Human studies are now ready to begin to confirm meaningful reversal of pathological aging processes. These clinical trials aim to alter older humans so that they function as much younger individuals. Even modest success will result in a paradigm shift that will impart enormous societal benefits, such as sparing Medicare from insolvency. Life extension is not standing idle while 5,000 Americans die each day from age-related illnesses. Joining us are physician scientists who want to hurry up these technologies to keep people from aging to death. While life extension is pushing these projects forward, we need financial help to ensure these studies are carried through to fruition. You can support this research by making a tax-deductible donation to Life Extension Society. All donations will be used to fund age reversal research. Join us on this essential mission. When I was young, it seemed that life was so wonderful. A miracle. Oh, it was beautiful, magical. And then they showed me a world. Find magic again. Sprout by HP. With Intel RealSense technology inside, now you can bend the rules of creativity outside. This brings us to the end of our special show from On Location at UF in Gainesville, Florida. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm.